Right, two things I actually wanted to clear up about Arsenal, just from the weekend in general, right? This whole celebration thing is kind of rumbling on, and I'm not quite sure why. I mean, I get it. Like, it is, it's obviously really good to rub it into Jamie Carragher, who was quite a sore loser in that moment. It's fun, maybe, to, like, remember it, because it makes you, as a fan base, feel like underdogs. But I don't think anyone was saying that Arsenal fans shouldn't celebrate. I think everyone was saying they were talking about maybe Odegaard and was Jorginho dancing in the centre circle or something. So, I get it. Like, Arsenal fans, and I, I want, this is what I want to say, Arsenal should be able to celebrate however they want. They should be able to say and do anything they want. And Jamie Carragher was, I mean, I think he was wrong in what he said. I thought it was a bit weird what he said. But at the same time, if you want to have a conversation around what is celebrating too early or, you know, being overzealous in the celebration, you shouldn't be shut down because you want to have that conversation. Of course, it kind of smells of being a sore loser. And I kind of get that, like... You know, everyone's a sore loser when they lose, especially if it's the top of the league. Like, Arsenal fans have been that. Liverpool fans have been that. But, and so have many other fans as well. But, like, the whole Jurgen Klopp thing and saying, well, Klopp can't celebrate because Arteta can't celebrate. Well, things are different between clubs. Klopp's always done it. Klopp celebrates every tiny little win. And I don't think anyone... I mean, people have called that out as weird, right? And I don't get why... I don't get this like sniping between fan bases because Jamie Carragher said something and because a couple of people on Twitter said something. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe you have a bit of insight as Arsenal fans and maybe you feel there is a difference. So I'd love to hear from you. Two, the second Arsenal thing is what counts as being title favourites? Like genuinely, are is there a difference between being a favourite in terms of you are the people that we think play the best and being the favourite, the people that you think should win it? Are those two different kinds of favourites? Are those two different kinds of... Not statistics... I mean, statistically, they probably are. But, like, the people I think are going to win it and the people I think are going to win it are two different things. Do you have two different favourites? Are Man City, by proxy, always the favourites? Because they're really good. Because they've got Pep Guardiola. Because they've got the history of winning the league very recently. Because they probably have... At the peak of their powers, the better squad and better team, and at the dip of their powers, the ability still to dig games out, which Arsenal obviously have, but just don't haven't shown it in the same way. Does that make sense? I just want to know what you guys think. So you're probably wondering what this is, so I'm going to tell you now. So for years, I wanted to make videos, right? Like I really wanted to make films, or and I still do, or just shorts, documentaries, that kind of thing. You all know that if you. Follow me, and then of course you know that. And then I started this YouTube channel when I moved on from, uh, you know, the kickoff and everything else last year. But I'd already got the channel, and so I was kind of building something. But I didn't know what it was at the time. Then came the summer and lots of transfers, and I did like a few transfer review kind of things. Did some tactic stuff, and some people really enjoyed that, and I really enjoyed that people enjoyed that. I enjoyed that they enjoyed the research I'd done, work, and then trying to synthesize that into like a, a you know, a, a video that people can consume and like know more about the players that we're gonna buy, and I really love that. But I realized that that's not, that's not like the kind of channel that I wanna make. And so I realized, there are loads of people that do that really well. James Alcott and, um, James Alcott and, uh, you know, Boovy and Rory and Adam McCola and, you know, SCS have really great stuff, but I don't know, they're huge for doing what they are good at. And I'd love to be huge for doing what I'd love to do and feel like I could be good at. But I've done the kickoff for a long time and I wanted to make something different. Like I genuinely wanted to make something something that I was really going to enjoy and something that if I was going to make football content that would get me into other opportunities, then, you know, like, it would be a bit different. And that's really hard in this space because a lot of people just want to consume or just want to have very specific stuff. They just want to hear, like, a couple of things. So this is my attempt at a football vlog because it, I've been kind of been playing this idea for a little while. I've been, like, filming things like this and then saying, like, oh, I'll put that out. And then I just don't. So for that exact reason, there will be days where I do football analysis because it's hard to do a vlog every day. But I kind of wanted to set this little thing for myself where I would make something I actually, 
I enjoyed doing the other videos, don't get me wrong, I really love those videos. But I don't think I was amazing at it. I think I was just fine. And, you know, some of you guys might disagree, but now I've got like a Discord and there's a Patreon. And I felt like I kind of owed it to myself and to the people that I was trying to make join the Patreon and the Discord to make something a little bit different, to kind of not have to talk for eight minutes on one subject, but to be able to talk for a few. The other day I said on Instagram to like a very small group of people, because that's what my Instagram is, um, what would you like to see? And some people said like more lifestyle-y kind of vlog stuff. And I get like, you're probably a football fan. You know, you could care less. But I meet a lot of interesting people in my job. And a lot of them have interesting stuff to say. So maybe, I don't know. I just want to play with something a little bit different. Doesn't mean the whole channel's going to change forever. But it is something that I feel is a bit more true to me. So if you are enjoying this already like two minutes in, then what would you like to see me discuss? I'm not asking you to tell me everything. But there are like loads of really interesting people in my comment section and sometimes I don't get to reply to them or I don't even get to discuss those subjects because guess what? Not every video is a bang video on YouTube and I don't have 20 minutes or 10 minutes or however long to like put into that. But I'd love to be able to do it short form on a vlog like this. So if you want to come along for it, great. God, I'm going to cringe at this later, I think. I think I'm going to cringe at this. No, no. Do you want to see the views? Yeah. Look. You might get sick of these views because, um, yeah, but I'm just going to show you because, well, look at them. I, I literally never get sick of these views. You've probably seen them on my Instagram about a billion times. That's Liverpool Street. That there is Tottenham Court Road. That there is Canary Wharf. Sorry, it's, it's sunny. Just over there, actually, is where Arsenal beat West Ham on the weekend. Right there. Uh, you can probably... There, look, see that, uh, like the, the, that helter skelter looking thing? That just below is West Ham Stadium. And if I'm honest, I love Casey Neistat. Six nil. I love Van Neistat, I love all those guys. I'd love to be able to make more videos like that. It feels more me. Or maybe it doesn't. And maybe it feels more of what I want to be. That makes sense. I put you quite low, I don't know why. I'm not talking down to you, I'm trying to get down on that level. Maybe that is. Maybe I should have thought about this. Should we go and get coffee? Yeah, great. So we're heading to go and get coffee. Okay, so where I'm taking you to now is actually one of my favorite spots in all of London. It's got good coffee, it's got great pastry, and it does good bread. I think I'm gonna get two of the three. two things when you do this. First of all, that you drink too much coffee. Secondly, that you pay entirely too much for coffee. Uh, and you should probably just brew your own, which is, which is hard. I'll give you that. Because, uh, uh, you know, coffee's hard. First of all, this is black Americano. That is an almond croissant. Cro croissant? Croissant? I don't know. I'm, I'm not awake until I've had my coffee, guys, but I'm totally awake. Speaking of overpaying for things, <laughs> Man City bought a Girona player, Savio. Now it turns out that they are both owned by the same people, right? And so there's gotta be some sort of conflict of interest. In fact, there was even an article the other day online asking, about, of course it was online, asking about the question, what will happen if Man City plays Girona in the Champions League? Because there is a distinct possibility that at some point they could do that considering the pots and the seeding, right? Anyway, the point being that anyone can buy anyone from anyone. But if Man City want to buy a player that they technically already own because of their ownership, is that kind of skirting around the rules? Especially if the player has never really played for the club that he's owned by and he's loaned out to another club and then is loaned back. And there's all sorts of creative accounting, shall we say, that is going on around this area. Then at what point is it you say, this isn't fair? you can own too many things. In the past, it was only really possible for owners to own a maximum of maybe two clubs. And very often, obviously, those two clubs will never meet because, well, the likelihood of, you know, you being able to own two massive clubs that are gonna compete in the same competition, very low. But now Man City have kind of got this conflict of interest of sorts. There is the other side though. And I'm interested to know what you think in the comments, right? I could make an argument for, and I think it's a compelling one, Man City are doing good things for City. They are doing things, good things for Girona. They are doing good things for any club that they own. You know, NYCFC, I think they own Melbourne as well. They own loads of different little clubs. Not all of them have got City in it, but they're part of the City group. If they are spreading 
good football and they are making competition within La Liga and competition within the Premier League, even though they are dominating in the Premier League, is that a good thing overall for football that people are learning to play a really great brand of like successful, happy... I know that there are people who are paid to shill for these kind of things, but you kind of have to ask that question the other way as well, right? Like. You know, is UEFA any better than Man City because of the stranglehold that they have? Is creative accounting illegal in football? Or is this sort of um, all part of the competition? Are we all just competing? Yeah, it does feel unfair, no, you're right. But for the greater, you know, for like the greater good in football, a Man City actually on kind of a, a grand scale doing something really good and spreading a brand of football that previously would never have been accessible to Girona fans? Or am I just judging that success means good in football and those two things actually aren't always good? Let me know in the comments below while I enjoy this uh, beautiful coffee. Look at that. This is so heavy. So this guy just pulled up. I get that you recycle, but could you cycle off somewhere else? The croissant is good, by the way. It's got chocolate in it too. The paste is so thick, it's really good. This is like half almond croissant, croissant, and half pan au chocolat. Chocolat is really good. It's kind of weird. I didn't expect it, that's all. The combination is really good. You don't dip it, but boy, is this good. And... Ah, there you are. I think Arsenal win the league. This one really sat true with me. Not the epilogues thing, this one. By the way, sorry to all my Nigerian brothers out there. Like that is a, that is a tough loss. Like I was, I was in a sports bar when that happened and the whole place was deflated, but for like two, I'm assuming women from Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, yeah, they were happy. I don't know enough about the country that I'm speaking about to say what I think. Uh, so if you are Nigerian or you want to inform me a little, I'm interested. Tough loss. For all the Cote d'Ivoire people out there, uh, great finish with the studs though, right? Like, who scores a studded goal to win it so late? Like, look, bam, you know? Tough loss, really tough loss. We've all lost a final like that in our time. Do you know what I mean? Tough loss. Tough loss. Tough. Tough. I say. Ah. Anyway. Um, tough. Well, the sun's, oh, the sun's back. I already did another video on this channel about how good Arsenal are. They're a great team. Uh, but I didn't realize how good Declan Rice, like I thought Declan Rice was really good. I feel like Declan Rice is now in that world-class area. Who's annoyed? Do you know what I mean? I feel like Declan Rice is now in that world-class bracket. Does that make sense? And I feel like the Champions League is only going to show us more of that. Depends on the draw, sure, but Declan Rice, get it. While we're here, let's talk Liverpool as well, right? Chasing Xabi Alonso, Fabrizio Romano says that Liverpool, and I would have expected this, know everything about the contract situation for Xabi Alonso. You would hope so if you're if you're kind of him and them. Uh, Leverkusen apparently warning Liverpool off, says someone from a Liverpool source. And someone else from a Liverpool source, and this is what I love, is because all of this is speculation, is the players that Liverpool want to stay will stay if Liverpool show intention to win or, like, you know, a want to move things forward and progress. The real question is, what is progress? The other real question, I think real progress, by the way, is Liverpool basically signing new players under a new manager um, and just showing that they are solid, that they will be, you know, competing or at least on the edge of that and coming towards that soon. I think that's progress or at least like levelling. I love that because, you know, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. But it's a really good headline to tell people is like players will stay if things are good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Players, I put my feet up. Yeah, players will stay if things are good. Toughest player to watch lose for Nigeria? It's Osiman. I just love him. The injury, the way he was limping around. He looked kind of sorry for himself and I felt bad for him because I like him. Let's finish on this. I'm gonna do a whole series on how other sports influence football or what we could take from other sports to influence football. And obviously it was a Super Bowl last night. Obviously Pat Mahomes went out there and did it, obviously, because he is 
Pat Mahomes. And this is the weird thing, right? Because I'm not involved really in the like the local day to day of it. I can like that Kansas win. And now I get why other people from other countries go, oh, I like Man City. Because really, Patrick Mahomes is, yeah, he is Kevin De Bruyne. And really, Travis Kelsey is Erling Haaland. And really, that whole team kind of have equivalencies. And yeah, like you could make an equivalency of Andy Reid and Pep. Maybe he's more like a Klops, maybe. But you know, there's a Pep equivalency there because he's so good, so successful, draws up all these brilliant plays, has all these brilliant ideas, sometimes overthinks it, confuses the players. Anyway, what can we learn from NFL? What, could, what would, and I'd love to hear it in the comments, what would you learn from NFL? The national anthem I love for America, and I do think I enjoy watching national, I wouldn't do it before every game, but I would do national anthem before FA Cup final, I kind of like to see it before the Champions League final because it feels like, you know, this country is involved. Would you do the owner's national anthem or would you do the national anthem of the country? You know what I mean? Like if it's Newcastle there, are you doing the PIF anthem? Uh, or if it's Liverpool there, are we doing the American national anthem? Do you know what I mean? Secondly, would you have a halftime show if you were there? Would you, you know, if you're at the Champions League, do you want a halftime show? The Sidemen had one, it was H, it was really good, but do I want that at traditional football? Maybe not. Post Champions League final, do we want to dump some Kool-Aid on a coach? I felt like the NFL broadcast last night was maybe watered down just ever so slightly for like the broader audience. And really the thing that I like, and maybe the same in the Champions League, I don't know, let me know which round of the Champions League you like the most. I like the semi-finals or the conference finals in, uh, in NFL because it feels like they're slightly more local. Obviously, they're being played in the locations that you have local fans. And it feels like the pure football fans are looking in on those. Whereas with the final, it's more like, hey, we bought some influencers and you should love it because this. Like everyone at the conference finals, they love it because they love football. There's not really like an influencer there or like, you know, someone there being like, you should love this because of fashion or you should love it. You know what I mean? Like they're not just trying to catch as many people. They're there for the real fans. That's what I love about the semi-final of the Champions League. It's at Anfield or not this season or, or it's at, the Etihad, or it's at, you know, the Bernabeu. I've been to a semi-final at the Bernabeu with Stephen Tries, like. <laughs> that had an atmosphere, do you know what I mean? I've been to a semi-final with Liverpool. That had an atmosphere. It was harsh, it was horrible. There are equivalencies between our things. What would you take from NFL? I'm making a lot of the video about it. What football can learn from American football or the NFL. By the way, if you're looking for a new podcast, then the Kelsey Brothers, it's called New Heights. It's on everything. It's amazing. If you're just a sports fan, you're just gonna love it. You just are. So go and listen to it. Probably a good time to listen to it or subscribe. You're probably gonna get a really good episode. Try the last cast as well. It's out there, it's out there, it's out there. Try it, try it. Okay, final bit for today. And this comes from the uh, Discord, but specifically the Patreon Discord, just because, you know, you want to treat those guys well. Pretty sure it was Robbie. Um, I've been banging on for ages about this uh, Atomic Habits. Really good book, uh, which I read ages ago. I have it in a pile of books somewhere, but I started listening to it. And it was basically about the small things that make up your day to day, which can really fundamentally change your life. Right. And in a way, it's a self-help book. But I also just think it's quite interesting sometimes to listen to analytical things and think about those things. And anyway, the way that I thought about it in terms of football stuff is very similar to what Klopp does with the players. When he first came to Liverpool, he said they were thinking a lot with their head and they needed to think more with their stomach or gut, as we say in the UK. And I kind of, I got the same vibe when I was listening to Atomic Habits, right? It was like Atomic Habits is about all these small micro decisions that you make on a day-to-day -day basis that cumulatively build up to make, you know, your, your, you as a person, but you as a habit. And if you do that even more as a team, all of those micro habits, the passes you make, the movements you make, the way that you pull players out or in or out of possession, really great to listen to. And it's really interesting to hear like the group think that they talk about, the, um, you know, the ideas of small things just building up over time. And it's kind of similar to what's going on with Arsenal Arteta, it's what happened with Klopp and Liverpool. You had to be patient with it. You weren't gonna, like, you, there were gonna be weeks where you'd see massive jumps, but it wasn't as if they'd done something, just one thing that week that had been everything. They might have done something that had changed and maybe everything had clicked, but it wasn't that it had been like a week of work and then everything just clicked for the next year. It was months of work and then everything 
got to that point. And also, it had to be continued. It couldn't be something you just did and then stopped. It had to be something that went on. And it just, for me, it's interesting. It's still a really interesting book. I'll leave a link down in the description. But it's a, first of all, it's a great listen. Second of all, it's a really good read. And I'd love to know what you guys think about the atomic habits of teams, the kind of things that you see, which you can relate to as a human, like idiosyncratically, when you're watching, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I brush my teeth on a daily basis. I shower every day, obviously. I, you know, like I, I eat this, I cook this, I buy this coffee, I buy this pastry, small different decisions. You know, I walk at this pace or I run at this time or I do push-ups at this time or whatever. Small little decisions that you make that, if you were to do it like a match over 90 minutes, what would you really be thinking in that moment? Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what's the outcome of that? Am I winning the Premier League on the back of this? That's what I'm trying to do with stuff like this video. Like, change fundamentally what I'm doing so that A, I'm happy with it because I, I was happy making those other videos, but I wasn't fulfilled, I wasn't satisfied in the way that I would want to be. And I felt like people were doing it better than me. And I want to do something that we can share, like my own identity, not just a thing where you're like, yeah, this guy is providing a utility and a service or like he's giving us some insight, but I could take or leave it. Like I can just go and watch someone else and do it. I want to do something that's difficult to rip off, difficult to kind of, that's difficult to make without me. I know that sounds egotistical. No, it doesn't. I just want to make something. Obviously I want to be involved in things that I want to be involved in. I want to get my video and uh, filmmaking skills up a little bit. Just so I'm just shooting. That's this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would, I, I just want to make this into a thing and I feel like it's like the nucleus of a football vlog idea. There's something there, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, let's go. Thanks for watching the first vlog, I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have got any questions or there's anything you want to know or there's something you want to see me cover, down in the comments below. And if you want to be a Patreon or you want to just be in the Discord where you can give questions, just like Robbie did, um, do it. Because I'm not going to do these call to actions every time. I'm not going to be this patronizing. This is just me trying to find my feet, even though I've had weeks to find my feet. See you tomorrow. What a beautiful day.